So uh, well-being, where people feel good, where people laugh and happy. Uh, this is what we will try to solve in this uh, lecture. And uh, let's see how you have a, a data-driven approach to this uh, question. So uh, the agenda for this talk will talk about uh, the motivation to use geospatial data. Uh, we will then see how you can incorporate GP data that comes from GPS into your data, is data project. Uh, we'll talk about bringing more data into, uh, to overlay with the GPS data. And finally, we will go into not too, too high, we'll speak a little bit about indexing and uh, how to uh, use large scale uh, data in, uh, in the context of geography. Okay, so a little bit of motivation. Uh, we are in Tel Aviv, and when you are going to someone to ask uh, where to select your house and how, uh, how uh, prices will go up, there are three factors. Location, location, and location. So location is, uh, in, many, in many contexts, uh, location is very essential. And uh, when we are talking about co in the consumer-related uh, data uh, where we have navigation projects like navigation or play search where location is is a topic but even if we are not about talking about navigation or things that are really uh, about the location even things like pictures or uh, even social social data comes today with a tweet it takes a geotag from the GPS, and you get data that is, uh, it, it has location. But consumer is, uh, is the old fashion, is the past, the future is uh, IoT. And when we are talking about IoT, what is location in this context? So my claim is that lar very large por portion, even most of the things, uh, have a very important location feature. Obviously, things that move, like robots, like uh, drones or autonomous cars, clearly they need to know about their location. But not only, even static things like camera, they are telling us something about a specific location. And uh, when, in, uh, when you are looking, when you are searching to, to interpret some event or to understand some event, you are looking about space and time. You see a person in one camera, and then you see he, him in another camera, and you understand how he moved in space and time. So location is the essence of, of many data uh, projects, and uh, we need to know how to work with it. But unfortunately, or fortunately, depend to whom, uh, it's, it's hard to use location. First, location is, uh, is, com is coming from GPS. And GPS started with uh, military, uh, in a military project. And GPS need a clear line of sight to satellite. So when you are talking about where people are most in the center of, of Manhattan or center of Tel Aviv, you have very high building. So the GPS signal is, is less accurate. Secondly, when you're getting the data from, from the GPS sensor, you get latitude and longitude. It's, it's un, these are very, I know several people that see latitude and longitude and can interpret it, but it's very unique uh, qualification. It's very hard to understand. And uh, also the, the two numbers, latitude and longitude, need to be interpreted in terms of the, the Earth's curvature. And as we know, it's not, it's not um, flat. And there are many types of units. It's uh, feet or 
mile or kilometer. So the, the bottom line is that there is no context for the data. So you need to understand, you need to interpret it, and you need to, to assert that, that its accuracy. So let's see how we do it. Let's start uh, with a very basic uh, challenge. We have Walmart branches. And we have uh, locations from devices. And we need to know which devices, which means which people are at the vicinity come near Walmart uh, uh, branches. And we have the GPS data from uh, uh, latitude to longitude. And we have the Walmart branches locations. So the first thing that is that we need to uh, know we, with which libraries we need to work. So here are the four very basic uh, libraries. First, we need Fiona to read and uh, write geographical data. Secondly, we will use uh, GeoPandas. GeoPandas, it's, uh, it's an extension of Pandas, and uh, it takes the data frame and allow uh, to add a geographic attribute, geographic column to it. We have PYProj to move between uh, different uh, projections. And lastly, we have Shapely uh, to manipulate and to ask queries about the data. These, all of these are open. We have also ArcGIS uh, from ASRI. It's uh, a paid uh, system. They have portion uh, for free, but I won't discuss it uh, in this uh, talk. How about QGIS? Q QGIS is a visual, uh, it's not a, a library. QGIS will use these libraries. But it's aligned with the RTS. Yes, I will talk about it. It's, it's a visualization tool. I, I, here I'm not talking about RJS as a visualization or software, I'm talking about RJS, the Python libraries that you can import into, into your uh, Jupyter uh, notebook and use uh, for, for doing processing. So not, now let's see the uh, simple code. So let's see how we do it. First, we take the, we have two CSV files, come with the lat long uh, columns, we load them into regular data frame. Second thing that we say that this, and this is typical when we, we use uh, GPS data, it comes from with the WGS84, and this is his, its uh, code. And we take the XY, the XY columns, and we create a geometry column. With this geometry column, we can have a geodata frame. And this is the first step. Instead of having a data frame that have only textual or numerical columns, we have also geographical data frame. We do the same thing for both, for the Walmart data set and for the devices data set. Secondly, the challenge here was to have 100 meters distance, but this uh, uh, geographical coordinate system is, uh, is, is, in, is, is polar. So it says us uh, in, uh, it gives us degrees, not not distance. And this is why we use a projection to move it to this uh, coordinate system, which is metric. Okay? The, sec the second thing that we do is to use, currently we have in the Walmart data set, we have points. But in order to say what is in, in distance of 100 meters, we need polygon. And this is what we do in this line. So we create, we replace the geographical column 
of the point with the geographical column of a polygon. And lastly, here happens the magic, and it's called S-join. S-join, what it means? What is the S? Spatial. Special join. Uh, it's, uh, we are performing here inner join, and this is the same ter terminology of join uh, between tables, but with uh, geographical data, and we look for points that, in that intersect the polygon. Let's uh, talk about uh, performance in a, in a minute, but let's do the hockey stick uh, slowly. Okay, so we have some problems in this model. First, like mentioned here, it, it will not perform. Secondly, but, and I think that in, in the eyes of, of uh, geography, it's, it's not real. It's, it's, it's uh, I don't, I won't say fake, but it's, it's not real. Because let's say this, what, what we see here. We have this uh, old person here, and he needs some help, okay? And we see here this gentleman on the left, and this lady on the right. And we ask ourselves, who should come and help the old person? For us, it's clear that the lady will come first, because there is a, a, a fence between the old person and the gentleman on the left. But when we are talking about 100 meters, it doesn't take into account how, how the city is divided. And not only is the city is divided in a, a very special way, uh, it also has a third dimension. So when we are talking about buffer of 100 meters, it's, if you look on the, on, the, on the map, it's meaningless. And this is where we start to be a data scientist. Why we we are called data scientists because we need data. And uh, the, the, the truth is, is in the data. And let's, let's try to understand how it works. So when, when we are talking about natural space, typically it's, it's what's called continuous. If you have one temperature in Tel Aviv, it will be slightly different in Hulon, and it will be more different in uh, the difference will be larger in Jerusalem and so on as you go further. But in, in urban space, it's not continuous, it's distinct. Until this wall, there is something. In the other side of this wall, there is totally something else. And and having, uh, looking on, on our space, we can see that it's, let, let's talk initially about its uh, static portion. It's hierarchical. We start with, uh, with in, in a country, in country level, then we have state level, then we can have uh, the block or the city and then we can have, uh, so it's the building itself, and in the building we, we have rooms, and this is, this is relatively static. There are also dynamic portion to, to the space, but most of it, or large portion of it, can be modeled as static. And let's start with uh, bringing more data into our project to, to, to make it more real. The first thing that we will say that we will bring, it's uh, OpenStreetMap. This is a worldwide uh, geographical data set. We can import it into our Python uh, project. There is a library for it, and it's very good. The only problem is that like open source, uh, it has varying level of, of, of accuracy, and uh, there are in the US, it's relatively good. In Europe, good. But we cannot totally rely on it. When we're talking about the US, our life are easier. And the US, uh, there are the census of the US, and there are very good 
uh, public data sets about, uh, about the US that can be used. And in Israel, the situation is a little bit more complicated. Where we are very strict about security here, so it's hard. But uh, there are starting to be more data that we can uh, use in, as a context of our data. And uh, OK, so we brought data into our, our project. But as mentioned here, there is a performance issue. First, I must say that the GeoPandas library is not so scaling, is not scaling so well. And secondly, uh, we need to, to index the data to get good results. There are two types of, of uh, indexes that we can use. The one is called the GeoHash because it's a hashing uh, attitude. It's a, a, a hashing approach and what it does, it divides the space into equal size rectangles. And this is very good when we have a uniform distribution of our data. But as we know, and obviously uh, the data of tweets or uh, people, devices that come for people are not uniformly distributed by, by any means. And we can solve it with uh, having there are levels of, of uh, geohashing, but it's a little bit complicated. And I don't want to speak more about this, uh, but if, if it works, it gives you O of 1, because it's a hashing function. But if it doesn't work, then uh, it's, uh, it, it can be used. The second uh, type of, of, uh, of Indexing is uh, R3. R3 is evenly distributed uh, tree, uh, and it, it and we will see in a minute how to use it. Uh, another type of tree that I won't show is uh, the quatri. Quatri is not evenly distributed, so you can uh, so it doesn't guarantee a, 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 the complex complexity. The R3 stores uh, the R3 stores bounding boxes. It doesn't store the, the, the specific polygon polygonal uh, attri features that we have, and also it searches for for bounding boxes. And let's see how to see uh, how to work with it. Now we have, instead of devices, we have tweets, and I will show in a minute why we use tweets. And the first step here is to insert the, uh, the polygon into the index. And you see that I'm not inserting the polygon itself, but inserting the polygon dot bounds, which means the index stores bounding boxes. And this is why when we are doing the search afterwards, we need to perform another search to see if it contains. And the contains here is, is a shapely uh, uh, operation, which means that it takes the exact polygon and see if it's in it. So, we, so the R3 index gives us a filtering, not an exact uh, search. Uh, I, let's wrap up and start with uh, two, two topics. The first is uh, we would like to push the filtering phase into the database in many cases. Uh, we can use all relational databases have geospatial uh, indexes and geospatial operators for, for uh, doing for performing such queries, and when we, when we are talking about NoSQL, uh, Redis has GeoHash, a native index. MongoDB also has a native special index, and in Cassandra you can use uh, a user-defined index for spatial data. And also very important uh, when we are talking about geospatial data is is a visualization. I think that this is the only presentation about geospatial data that doesn't have any map in it. Uh, and like the gentleman behind says, we can use S3 software, we can use 
QGIS. These are the most uh, leading software uh, uh, for, for, for visualization and, and analysis of geographical data. And for, for uh, using the pandas in, in, um, in Jupyter, there are libraries as well. Now let's summarize and see what, how we can answer uh, the question that I raised in the first slide and where people feel good. So how, how, we, how we did this, how we performed this research. We took millions of tweets in New York. Why we took New York and not Israel? Because in Israel nobody tweets. Everybody's <laughs> quiet. Uh, here in Israel, uh, the Twitter is not uh, and, and, and then we extract the feeling from the text in the tweet using some NLP engine. The first thing that we did is to perform clustering. And this is where many GIS projects end because this is what you can get from the data itself. Uh, after you, we perform the clustering, the clustering is nice, but it's, it's very limited. So we brought the buildings, uh, buildings layer, and we overlay the tweets with the buildings. Now we took the point of interest of New York and we overlay with this, and we can see how, how it, uh, how it goes, and then we overlay with many data sets, and here are some, some facts to finish it uh, nicely. The most, the largest number of tweets is in the nightclub and con concert venue in Webster and Hall. When you are going to New York, you, are, you, you can go and see why people are so excited in this hall. Secondly, and this is very nice it, to see that, and these are anger tweets, come from the India Passport Application Center. Anybody knows how <laughs> and why? And lastly, we can see here that students are very uh, expose their emotions, and uh, this is something that we see in the tweets, and uh, the theater and the Academy, Academy of uh, Drama and brings also, and so the results are very, make, makes a, a lot of sense. Well, how long did you collect the tweet? For one day, one week? It's one year. One year. Yeah. Um, to conclude, when you get location data first, use some very basic data to, to see that it makes sense, uh, to, to see that it's aligned with, with your expectation and get some very basic insight. Later, you need to bring more data and to see how to overlay how your existing data interacts with, with other layers. And lastly, you need to start building some um, a more complicated uh, algorithms to, to scale it and uh, run it uh, with performance. Thank you.